Okay, should we talk Newcastle? Because they're a fairly big story right now in terms of transfers, money, balancing money. And I kind of wanted to reassure A, Newcastle fans, but also just other fans that are concerned about the Premier League, FFP, and all these kind of things, that actually the broad direction of the league seems pretty good and why this is probably a sign of the future. In case you didn't know, Kieran Trippier and lots of other players are allegedly being offered or farmed out or possibly, you know, like an Almiron type is out for sale because guess what? Like, if you have players that you could possibly upgrade in that position on and you still think that you can get money off, off of them, so for instance, you can sell them to Saudi Arabia for 20, 30, 40 million and you think you can get value there, or you think you can get 15 million from Bayern for 33 year old right back, you're gonna find value in the market. Now, some people for this season, this month, and you know, all this time around now are saying, hey, like, this is terrible because this is hampering Newcastle's growth. This means that Newcastle can't grow at the speed that they want to because X, Y, Z. Now, there are two different camps for this, and we can sit in either side. First of all, Kieran Trippi is a fantastic footballer. He's probably looking to do something before his career ends, and he probably thought that Newcastle's trajectory was about this. If anything, he's kind of served his purpose at this point. Kieran Trippier has done what he needs to do for Newcastle. And Almiron, very similar, has done what he needs to do for Newcastle. He was bought back in the Benitez era when it was like, let's find value in MLS or a whole other league and see what we can get from it. So, well, I don't know how much value they got, but you get my point. Like, Newcastle would look to upgrade their right back and look to upgrade their right ring very soon anyway. And the fact they're out of the Champions League, realistically, they're out of the top four. Let's just be honest about it because they're, what, like 13, however many points, 11 points off top five, which I don't think would get you Champions League anyway. But they're off that. So it makes sense for Newcastle to be smart financially. They're not doubling down. They're not losing out. They're not having, you know, they're not throwing away anything in the very long term. All they're doing is sticking within FFP and making a smart decision. Let's face it, like we knew that Newcastle had been badly run for the last decade. Now, whether you want to argue over whether new owners should be hampered by Newcastle being ba you know, badly run for the last decade is a whole other thing. And we can get into that right now if you want. Newcastle have had a bad run with their previous owner in Mike Ashley, and that was always going to run them into the ground. It was always going to be terrible. Whoever took over was always going to have a bad financial situation to pick up from, because guess what? They were giving away sponsorships, which weren't factored in in terms of club value, all these kind of things. They weren't making the money that they needed to make in order to get out of that situation. They weren't losing money in the way that Mike Ashley probably would have liked to have made out. They were just being, existing. And that's not enough to move forward when everyone else is moving forward quickly, especially if you have high aspirations. Stick with me here, right? So when you get then a new ownership who has basically all the money you could ever try and spend in an entire generation ever, and I mean like ever, it kind of makes sense that we can't just go, yeah, spend all of that money. Now, what's weird about this is it took Man City a while to get to where they are. And in fact, when they first started out, it wasn't quite as focused as I think the rose-tinted glasses that we currently have remember. It took them a little time to find that they could possibly tempt Pop Pep Guardiola to a project like Man City. It took them a little while to think, hey, what can we do with these academies, with this investment, with this infrastructure? When they got it, then they really nailed it. But I don't think that money automatically equals good. Look at a lot of other clubs who've spent a lot of money more recently and haven't come out on top. It comes down to strategy, it comes down to the people at the top, it comes down to the thinking, the management, luck is a huge part of this as well. And then on top of that, you've also got the fact that other teams might not need to be having a good moment at that point either. Like, you can't just have a good moment and expect everyone else to just have a bad moment or not quite make it. At the same time, on top of everything else, Newcastle is a club that will need to build over time. Now, you might say, hey, that's a delayed gratification thing that football fans just won't get into. Man City got their instant gratification. Other teams had their instant gratification with everything that they've had invested or have invested. Why should that be the case? I think this is the long-term future of football at this point. The long-term future should be being more financially safe, being more financially responsible, spending within your means like Newcastle are doing, there possibly should be some ramifications for misspending, not spending enough, not managing your team correctly, not managing your finances, all these kind of things. I'm not saying that anyone should go to prison or anything terrible should happen to them, but there should be some form of like competitive fairness in this.
Now, some people say this gives an advantage to the already established people of the top six. Well, guess what? The already established teams already had an advantage because money isn't the only advantage of those big teams. And some of them, yeah, like there might be some, we might discover that some of them operated outside the lines, but that's not within the lines. And Newcastle spending does not make that fairer within the league. It makes it less fair. So while we're all busy moralizing about this and saying, well, Newcastle should be able to X, Y, Z, I really did enjoy Simon Jordan's take that at least for a short period, owners should be able to have a grace period, if you like, have a period where they can actually get their feet under the table, maybe spend a little more, <clears throat> maybe be allowed slightly looser lines to spend within so that they can you know, catch up with everyone else or get their project going or boost things. People do initially want to put a bit more money into businesses. I get that. But that shouldn't last forever, and it shouldn't be something which is so inexorbit exorbitantly unfair that everyone else suddenly goes, well, why are Newcastle allowed to spend and we couldn't do that anyway? What, how, what if we would take a stupid loan? It might encourage people to take crazy loans. Might, there are all sorts of different things and behaviors that it might encourage that we don't necessarily want to encourage. So, yeah, there's a lot to think about here. There's a lot to balance. But let's not, in the moment, while Newcastle are talking about, you know, getting rid of Almiron and Kieran Trippier, two people who are good squad members, and Kieran Trippier has been fantastic for a while, but let's face it, Almiron and Kieran Trippier would not be in the next iteration of this Newcastle team. And if they're going to sell them in the summer, they might as well sell them now. Then, you know what I'm saying? Like, it, we're getting lost in a headline of Newcastle have to sell to buy, Newcastle can't spend. Not right now, no, but they're slowly going to increase that. And sometimes slowly increasing things is better than doing it very, very quickly. Now, on top of that, and I get, I get that there are some people who might be annoyed, Newcastle fans want to see stuff happen within their lifetime. They want to ensure that there is at least something coming down the line. And I said this in my last video, and some people kind of, some people didn't, see it in the way that I saw it uh, and didn't share my sentiment. Sometimes the slow build, the slow burn is the best burn, the good build, right? And I get it. You must be frustrated. You've, you see other people do things. You thought the money was going to come. You thought you were going to be able to just absolutely do everyone else in the league. And suddenly it was Newcastle's turn to be on top. It may still be Newcastle's turn to be on top at some point. It's just going to take a little bit longer than it did before. Now, what I will not say is, hey, like, you know, you guys should be grateful you got any investment or anything like that. I, I don't necessarily think that's the case. Like, of course, I think it would be great if Newcastle could be more competitive. I think they will be more competitive. But let's also look at the way that Eddie Howe plays his players. There's an incredibly intense way to play football. There has to be some strategy to what you do. L let's also just look at who comes through the academy. Could they structure their academy better? Does that count as investment? What counts as investment? What doesn't count as investment? What, how can they be smart within the rules? The rules don't just say spend 100 million on Mbappe and whatever on wages and you're all good to go. It's a bit like the NBA where they have a, a spending uh, cap or it's a bit like the NFL where they also have a cap. Some owners just go, cool, I'll pay the money to spend whatever. They don't care about that. But if we do that in football where there is an open market, very different to the kind of closed circle that the NBA and basketball have, then what do we do? Because you are just opening yourselves up to just almost exponential amounts of spending. Some other people say, well, Saudi will come in and they can outspend us. Well, guess what? Saudi can outspend the Premier League at the moment. They are not within financial fair play or without within regulations of whatever is going on in FIFA right now. Not every player is rushing over there because heritage, because history, because your own personal connection with a team in a country that you come from or you've always watched or whatever, builds. So I'm just interested. I, it feels very weird in the moment to go, oh, we have to spend right now. We have to do this. We have to, because otherwise these guys are going to catch up. It's a really great way of the press managing to turn us on each other as, as fans and as people to get us to basically just want crazy capitalism that's completely out of control. And at this point, I'm kind of bored of it. Newcastle, I wish you all the best. I think you can still do something. I think Eddie Howe is a tactical genius who will take you, well, he's not a genius, but he's a tactical smart guy who will take you further than maybe a lot of people thought he would. And I think the parameters within he, which he has to operate are still very good parameters. I'll be interested to know what Newcastle fans think at this point. What do you think is gonna to happen to Newcastle? Uh, let me know in the comments below and I'll check you in a while. Much love.